one of the things we get asked all the time is what is an MX record? MX stands for mail exchanger. It tells the rest of the web, it tells every browser, everything that could email you, whereabouts your mail runs from. And every domain that accepts email has to have an MX record. So let's, for example, take just some generic domains that might be that exist on the web. Let's take BBC. What we do, this is a program called Terminal, which is on a Mac. You can, there are similar things on PC that do the same thing. And I'm going to use it as an example of a way to show you what MX records are. So let's do a dig MX on, um, let's do bbc.co.uk. So this will be about emailing someone at bbc.co.uk. Mail client would look it up and then it would say, aha, right, here we have two MX records. We have this number here means priority, so it'll take the lowest one here first. So that's this is the one we need to look at, this cluster1.eu.messagelabs.com. What it'll do is it will send an email to that that server there, the cluster1.eu.messagelabs.com. This priority is important because if this were to go down or this were to not be accessible, then it would fail over and send to this one with a 20 priority. Now every domain, as I said, that has email has MX records. So let's look at our own. So dig mxtsos.com see it runs through a server of ours called mail.tsohost.co.uk. Now we're running from a domain that I'm doing some training on called tsotraining.co.uk. And if I do a dig mx on tsotraining.co.uk, you'll see that it responds with mail3.uk, gridhost.co.uk. That's the server of ours that runs the mail, or it's a load balancing server that, that runs the mail. So if you send an email to tsotraining.co.uk, it'll send a mail to that address. What I have shown in another video is how you change it. And right now, what I'm going to do is just make this change for you. I'll give an example. I'm going to set this to wantedpeople.myexternalmail.com. I'm just here in the TSO host hosting control panel. I've gone to the, the, the website settings page. I've clicked custom DNS. I'm just changing this MX record. So let's change that there. Now, this number here, the number that says 300 up here, that's the number of seconds until it's going to look for another update because it would be really inefficient for it to look for an update every single time I query or send a, send a request. I mean, if I do another lookup now, you'll see it's got 249 seconds and then 247, 246. Um, so rather than waiting for that and keeping you on the video, I'm just going to do is I'm going to do a lookup on our name service. So I'm going to look up on our name service, which this would by default be set to for the, for the MX records. Let me, get my, let me get my formatting right. So I do a dig MX ns1.tsos.co.uk and then for the domain. Obviously, you don't need to ever type any of this. I'm just using it as an example. And you can see there, now the mail is actually set to 1234.myexternalmail.com. It's going to cache it for 86,400 seconds. It advises, actually, my computer is only going to cache for 300 seconds, but, uh, but for 86,400 seconds, 1234.myexternalmail.com. So now, if that had taken effect, my computer would send email to that mail server there. You might wonder, why is it a host name? Surely emails usually run, or surely computers run on IP addresses. With mail records, with MX records, they always need to be a host name. What happens on a lot of historic hosting with us, for example, any cPanel hosting, is the mail runs on the same server as the website. So what will happen is the MX record will actually point to the domain name. So the domain name points to an IP address, and then the MX record points to the domain name. On our cloud platform, because the mail is very, very separate to the websites, so separate, in fact, that it runs in a separate data center, um, is that's not possible. It, it points to different IPs. So, for example, I'm doing something here called a ping. So, it's so train. Okay, you can see that runs from this IP 9128.99.12. And if I ping this uh, one, it's actually usually set to email 3 to it for it. host. UK. You can see it pings to a completely separate IP, very different to the website. Obviously, the one I've set it to, 1234.myexternalmail.com, won't work at all because I just made it up. Um, I want to give you a couple more tips. Uh, first of all, if you don't want to use this terminal program I'm using, the best way to look up an MX record for a domain and see where your site email runs from is something like mxtoolbox.com. What I've got here is I've done an MX lookup for Google.co.uk, you can see they have a lot of different mail servers here. Uh, two, two at the same priority at the top, and then further, further down priorities going further down. Um, let's do a look up for TSO training.co.uk. You can do this straight from the MX page or on MX toolbox, you just do MX colon because this lets you look up a large number of things. 
So there were, you can see now my MX record for this domain is set to 1234.myexternalmail.com and then IP address, no A record. That just means this doesn't resolve anywhere. So if you try and send mail to me, nothing's going to work. If I change it back, and hit save, then within the next So if I change it back within the next 10, 15 minutes, you should see this update. And in fact, it's done a real-time look up here. And you can see it's actually applied the change I've made, and that's the IP address it runs from. So the other thing I wanted to point out to you is that we run here separate zones for the www, all the subdomains, and this. By changing the MX record for tsotraining.co.uk, what we're changing is where emails for something at TSO, tsotraining.co.uk are going to. What we're not changing is where emails for something at www.tsotraining.co.uk go to. That's why if I did a big MX on tsotraining.co.uk, you can see I get that mail three. But if I'd set that to something different, I would get a different response if I do that. Now, the likelihood of you ever having emails at www.yourdomain.co.uk is very, very slight indeed but you may well have them on subdomains. So just remember that if you make changes to MX records as the default, usually you're only making change to the actual root domain, not any subdomains like www before it. That is about it, I think, just to explain you how they work. There's gonna be separate videos on setting particular DNS records and MX records, uh, such as for Google or for Office 365. Thanks.